Hi, welcome to my channel and I want to talk about working in different cities and even in other countries as a massage therapist. I'll briefly talk about how I work and the types of clients that I have that allow me these travel opportunities and then I'll go more in detail about how you can work abroad and transition and prep for that process in the event it's really something that you're thinking about. So let's get into it. Now, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Joanne Brito and I am a celebrity massage therapist and my business is 100% mobile. And I get therapists that'll ask me like, hey Joanne, how do I travel like you? Or if I wanted to work in another country, how do I do that and is that even possible? And obviously the quick response to that question is absolutely. Yes, it is possible because I do it. Um, so my client base primarily consists of pro athletes, musicians, and even businesses. And all three of those options have allowed me to travel as a massage therapist. Now, if you wanna do business like myself, I call this option the private sector option. I don't know, just made it up, kinda sounds fancy. And like some secret government agency, I don't know. My name is Massage Ninja, so you know I'm like, but basically, when I say private sector, I primarily mean that I have a private based structure. Either a private client, a business, a team, or something will request for me to travel with them for a set amount of days, set amount of time. Now my pro athletes are my primary client base that book me to travel, but I've also um, went overseas last year on a mini tour with one of my um, clients that's a musician and I had never been to Europe before, so that was like an amazing experience. So if you live in an area with athletes or there's an entertainment market where you can um, meet actors, directors, musicians, producers, you know, all the above and more, tap into that because that type of clientele will give you these type of travel opportunities. These type of clients not only invest in their bodies to look good, but they also need to feel good and be able to perform at their highest optimal level. So once they find a therapist that gives them the results they desire or beyond their expectations, they're gonna continue um, booking you and investing in you and wanting to take you with them wherever they go. Plus, depending on the type of client that you have, um, like what level they are, like if they're A-list celebrity or you know something like that, trust, um, discretion, and loyalty are a very important component as well. So not only your work ethic, but also your the, your character can also set that person at ease and kind of give them a sense of peace if they really are like vibing with you and love your work performance and even just you overall as a person and they trust you that way they're not having to worry about you know if you're trying to sell a story to a tabloid or you know trying to take advantage of them or or something like that so those are things that kind of keep in in mind as well now i do have um, a book that i wrote it's called guidebook to mobile massage tips um from the Massage Ninja. And in that book, I do talk about how you can get these type of clients uh, more in detail on how you can set your pay rates and how to sell, set up these certain travel work trips and all of that. So I don't wanna go too much into detail with that, but I will link the book um, for Barnes and Nobles and Amazon in the description. So that way you can look into that. But so I don't wanna go too much in detail about that, but I wanna discuss stuff in this video that I didn't talk about in the book. For those of you not interested or you don't have a sports or entertainment uh, market in your area, then consider tapping into businesses. So I have personally traveled and worked for um, marketing and oil and gas companies. So an example of a work uh, travel trip that I did is I flew to location. Um, the first day I pretty much um, worked on everybody that was attending an event. It was like a seminar or a conference of some sort. And um, uh, the first day I spent working on HR, certain executives within HR that came, some executive a staff, like assistants, secretaries that attended, and then also some CEOs and CFOs. So basically like high ranking people that came in for 
this particular um, seminar conference. So the first day I spent working and doing massage from morning till night. So it was a little exhausting. But then they also asked me if I could do a small presentation on basically like the benefits of massage, um, what I do, and then also structuring something um, that they could do in their office. Because, you know, when you add massage as one of the incentives for your employees, it obviously boosts morale and um, uh, retention and also productivity, which at the end of the day that's what all you know employers really care about is the work productivity that their employees are producing so incentives like that really can like help employees work knowing that like hey every quarter or this many times a year you know the company comes and brings in whether if it's one or more therapists to come and massage us you know that's like an incentive so i also gave options of um i explained to them how one um event that i partnered with a yoga and meditation person and so while there was yoga and meditation going on in different rooms i had came in with two other therapists and we were doing chair massages and it was kind of like different groups and rotations going for that. So it was just really fun to explain and go over that because, and I never even really realized I could do stuff like this as um, a therapist, which is like a fun event. But what I guess a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of these companies will have healthy food options and also have um, a gym on site and when they can also show that they're bringing in people for the mental and emotional aspect um, for their employees which is like a full gamut of like kind of like health and wellness this also helps bring down like a company's insurance rates so when you kind of really savvy about all the little intertwinings of different businesses then you can kind of um, tap into that or say I never thought in a million years a company would be flying me you know to not only work but also do these little presentations and I've done them I've done them a handful of times I haven't really I should probably focus more on it but I just kind of don't have the time you know in order to do like that aspect of the business because my other clientele keep me so busy but that's something that you can think of like you can actually travel doing these things you just gotta be um, very methodical on how you um, structure and the type of clients that you market to. Now I will say that if this uh, part of the business interests you and you're wanting to maybe um, work with more businesses in order for opportunities to travel, that you'd want to pick either a company that has clients in different cities or all over the world or it's an actual company that like a business that has you know offices um, in different cities or all over the world so the clients that are the marketing companies and even the oil and gas companies that I have worked for and traveled for met that criteria and they were either a national or a worldwide brand so that's something you want to keep in mind because one they have the budget to be able to um, fly you to even have that opportunity and two um, some of them will have the need you know for you to do it you know so I mean, like even on a marketing company that I worked with, they really wanted to land a client and they did it. They wanted to ensure that they wanted to add an incentive and ensure that they could like lock that client down. So um, and then I'm just cool as hell anyway. So who want to want to hang out with me? <laughs> so they flew me in to work and then kind of help seal their deal along with like a lot of other stuff that I can't really talk about just in case some other marketing company is watching and also, you know, if a company has you signed an NDA, you can't really disclose any details. So unfortunately, I can't really go into all the details of stuff that they did, um, but it was like super cool and innovative. And you just, again, I just never realized I could do those kind of things as a massage therapist with not only the private clients that I, you know, have like as individuals, but also like with these businesses. So it's just something to think about and is a way for you um, to travel. Okay, so let's get into working abroad. So particularly for you young therapists that are really still wanting to see the world and live your best life before settling down and entering true adulthood, um, this option might be more appealing to you, 
I've been a single mother, so working abroad wasn't really an option for me um, because who would have been watching my daughter for weeks or months at a time while I'm gone, you know, working in another country. But had I not had a kid, I definitely would have jumped at this opportunity earlier on in my career. But I will say that on the flip side though, you know, my daughter has recently graduated from college. And um, so if I wanted to work abroad now, this would still be an option that I might consider in the future. So for those of y'all that are older, don't think that you have to be young to access some of these, um, you know, things I'm fixing to tell y'all. You know, I'm gonna drop some of these jewels so I don't want you to think that none of them will apply to you, okay? I just really like sharing like any knowledge that I gain and it, you know, different knowledge I get from other therapists that have done stuff, even though I haven't experienced it yet. I love to share like all this knowledge that I get from all over because a lot of the stuff I didn't have and I didn't even know where to go to when I was young, like getting into the business. If you're interested in working abroad, look into getting a working holiday visa. I know some of y'all are like, what the hell is that? <laughs> a working holiday visa was really designed for young travelers to explore the country while also being able to work and maintain some kind of income and live during the process. So, um, but each country has different requirements for, for that particular visa and some even have age requirements. So typically the age range for a working holiday visa is between 18 and 35. Some will be, a, you know, all the way to that 18 to 35 range and some may be, you know, 18 to 25 or 18 to 30. It just ranges. Every country is different. So it's going to be imperative for you to like pick a country, whether it's Australia or Korea or Spain or New Zealand, whatever it is, you'll have to go there and then you're going to have to one, see what the requirements are to get a working holiday visa, um, two, see if you qualify for it and then, you know, go for there and then start the process. So but working holiday visas are one of the more popular visas to get. It's a little more flexible too, and then they're not as you know stringent um, in some countries. But again, you're gonna have to see what the requirements are. Now, I would suggest uh, maybe consulting with an immigration attorney at least once before you apply. That way, you can kind of get an idea of you know what to expect, what you're needing. If you're there, if there's any little stipulations for the country that you wanting to go to, if there's something that maybe you should know. And then also they can kind of help you from like what, um, what things you can look for. So make sure you don't fall for any scams because there are a lot of scams online that'll claim they'll be able to get you this type of visa or whatever. And they're just gonna take your money. So that's why I always like will suggest at least just if you can consult with an immigration attorney, particularly for the country you're trying to go to at least once uh, before applying, okay? Now, if you are beyond the age requirement um, for a working holiday visa, you know, then it, it's not like you can't work abroad. You're just gonna have to apply for a different type of visa. And that could either be a skilled trade, a skilled worker visa or um, a temporary work visa. So either one of those options or something similar to that um, would be some, would be that you could apply for and you can still work abroad as a massage therapist, you know? Now, if you, uh, now the advantage of um, being older for this option is that, um, you know, especially for a skilled trade, if you're a therapist, you have the experience and all that to work abroad. So, because most countries are gonna request an RPL, which is a required prior learning or something similar to it. Um, it might be title different depending on the country. And basically he's gonna want, you know, all your work history, like if you, your license information, you know, where you've worked, all of that stuff. That's some all the stuff you're gonna have to submit. But also, um, again, going to talk to that immigration or consulting with an immigration attorney, they can kind of go over the different options of visas, what your goals and what you're trying to achieve with applying. And they can kind of even tell you which would be, which visa would be the best fit for you. Cause there's so many kinds of, and I don't know all the names cause I haven't really went through that process, but that would just be something to kind of go and consult with them. So you'll know. Also another recommendation um, that I would, I've heard from one therapist that was very helpful is that you could even consider incorporating yourself 
and making yourself um, like a true entrepreneurial entity. That way when you do that, you can not only massage while you're over there, but you can also do consulting work. Um, you can even work as like an outside vendor for a hotel or a spa or a resort. So that could be another um, way as well, potentially that you could um, work abroad in another country or adding that somehow in the visa. But again, I haven't went through that process. That's something that you would want to really look and research um, because like I said, every country has different requirements. But in order to work legally in another country, you're gonna have to have um, a visa. So that's um, an option that you can go through if um, some, some little jewels and options you can do if you wanna work abroad. So another popular question that usually pops up is, well, what do I do about a massage table? You know, what if I wanna, while I'm working for, you know, a company, a spa or a hotel, or if I'm gonna do my own clients on the side, what do I do about a massage table? So you have a few options. Um, the best option would probably be, if you're not trying to tote anything, the best option might be to see if you could find some a cheap table there. If you're really adamant about having a massage table um, there in the country that you're in. Or once you figure out like your living arrangements, like whether you're gonna do an Airbnb or stay at a hostel or whatever other popular shared space that might be for your country, you could even potentially have a table shipped there, just find one online and have it shipped there. Um, I don't know how cost effective that's gonna be. I mean, obviously you can find a cheap table online, but shipping it to wherever you're going and ensuring that you get it, that's the next question. So um, I personally had invested a few months ago in a, a Nubis table. It's a table, it's the size, like you could check it with your luggage, but depending on how much luggage you're taking and all that, I don't know if that's gonna be something that you want, but the Nubis uh, table, it's very compact. It's, um, I think I wanna say it's like 30 pounds or something, which may sound heavy, but my last table was an Oakworks um, aluminum uh, table that has like a trifold where the back came up as well. So it was heavy. So the, the table is about the same um, weight as my last table, but it's so compact and so little. It's like the fraction of the size of your regular massage table. So you can consider just taking that with you and it would be the easiest option instead of trying to figure out paying extra baggage fee because I definitely would not recommend taking your massage table because you're going to have to pay not only for the baggage fee but the oversized fee to store it and I don't know if there's any additional international fees involved in that or whatever so it, it could be a pretty penny just to take your table if that's something you're really adamant about doing so I would see about maybe shipping one or um, investing in the Nubis table and I'll also put that link in the description um, but so far I'm loving it. Like it has made my life so much easier going up and down stairs and just it, the wheels are all around movable wheels, just like your luggage wheels. And like I said, so compact. So I'm loving the table. Um, but again, that could be just another option you can think about. Um, and if buying the whole Nubis table, it might be a little difficult for you. You might even think about investing just at least into the mattress one. I don't know, but Taking your table and like your regular size table to another country may not be that practical. So, you know, or just research stores there. You may be able to, there may be a store in the city where you can find a table, you know, but then you also got to think about that market that you're going to. Like, is it, are you going to be making, you know, that much money to where it's profitable in addition to like you working wherever it is that you're choosing to work so it's just stuff to think about but it would be nice to have a table so who knows if you're able to like massage people on the beach or figure out things like that that you can do to make money it's not a bad idea right so um it's just something to think about and i will like i said link that table in the description below so you can so you can um look into that Okay, so we've kind of went over like how I work, the type of clients I have, and options of ways for you to work overseas, but you might be thinking, oh, I don't know if I really want to commit to this whole visa process, but I do want to travel and experience other cultures and different countries. 
but and just maybe see where I would like to maybe potentially decide where to get a visa and work at. So I do have another option for you. Now, the only downside with this option is you will not be able to work legally in the country that you're at, but it's a way that you can travel, meet people, and it's one of the safest ways you could probably travel with a, with a group of individuals and meet. And that's with linking with a digital nomad company. So I've had tons of friends that have did this. Most of them do like web graphics design they do websites things like that or they have companies where they can be managed and um, you know or they just do blogs or, or anything like that anything that it can be that can be managed like a web-based um, business them um, they're kind of considered digital nomad so I will say that even though you can't work um, in whatever said country for the amount of time that you're choosing to go with a digital nomad company or not um, the upside is that during this time you can create blogs um, and really just create all the content you're trying to do for your brand and your business and all of that actually so if you're trying to create online maybe courses for um, for yourself maybe you want to do CEU classes or whatever the case may be linking with a digital nomad company can give you this opportunity to not only experience the cultures meet people see if maybe working in a different country is something that you'd like to do but building your content building your brand like you can't really put a value on that now i did just discuss the option of bringing um that say the nubis table that i had just purchased now i would suggest bringing um, a table like that with you um, if you did choose doing this option to travel and primarily not really because you're going to be making that much money with however many people are are in this group that you're traveling with um, but really because it's like you should take advantage of the fact that you're going to be traveling with a group of people who most of them have um, digital experience so what i would do is i would take my table and barter services you know so you could barter massages for services whether they can you know you might find somebody that can make you a logo or somebody that can just they may have a cool ass drone and do content that you can do for your page or your blog or um, different pictures you're trying to do maybe to create contents for for your classes whatever you just want good massage content you might need a model for the beach or whatever it is um, you actually have a service that you could actually barter like their services with so i would definitely take my nubis table if i chose this option and i've actually looked into several um digital nomad companies and some of them you know are, can go for a few weeks up to like a whole year if i were to do that at this point in my career i definitely would do it to be able to unplug from what i'm doing with work right now and really create like the content because i'm not going to be distracted with trying to go and work on an appointment or do go and do all that so definitely where i am in the stage of my business i would create some of the dopest content and take advantage of that opportunity so if you're in that phase but you don't really want to commit to the visa but you do want to travel and you're not sure maybe what country and if it's even something you're going to be you know meshing with that would be an option for you another upside is that not only will is it is it one of the safest routes um, to travel and also the fact that you have access to people that can help build your content but you're also immersed in the culture so while you're in these different countries you're gonna meet people learn how everything operates and it could also be beneficial to where like you may meet somebody in a country that you probably will maybe apply for a visa at and they may be like hey come and come and stay with me whenever you're ready to come back and again you could probably barter service uh, but again you can barter massages for you know basically your room and board type situation you know but it's always good to like you can network and meet people in the country that you're at which would make the process of getting the visa and acclimating to working over there a lot easier with the digital nomad um, option so it's just things to think about um, while you're doing that and um, it's just again the, up, the downside is you can't legally work in the country but there's so many things that 
would be beneficial for your business as well as um, in the future if you choose to do the visa process if you're able to meet you know one or more people in that country and be able to have somewhere to live and then you're more comfortable going somewhere foreign and and because you'll have a few friends you know okay so now we got to talk about money, right? Like we've talked about all these ways to potentially maybe work overseas and visas and living and many tables and all these <laughs> things that you got to do. But obviously money is going to be a factor. So you're going to need to plan for this process. You know, some countries require you to have a certain amount of money in your account when you apply for visas. So that's something to keep in mind and to look at when, um, depending on the country. But also, um, you wanna prepare for everything. So a lot of y'all are not sure if this is gonna be an obstacle that keeps you from working abroad or how can you start structuring your life so that way you can be prepared, particularly for working abroad. So one of the main things and one of the easiest things that I usually tell um, therapists to do is to put your money away in like a high yield savings account or a, a tax-free savings account. Um, so if you're like killing it with work, like you're making money with your private clients, maybe you're doing a lot of corporate events, whatever the case may be, allocate a certain percentage of what you make and just put it away in there. I would just put it away so that way you're not touching it and then it's accruing value while it's just sitting in there. Also, some of y'all get income tax returns. So if you get a nice income tax return back, put a good a portion of that away in that same um, savings account because even though if it's a little bit making a little bit at a time a little bit at a time especially once you get to if you can get to savings of like 10 to 20 thousand over a course of time that the percentage rate is higher that you're getting in a return so it's just nice to be making that small passive income in those type of savings accounts while you're planning and getting ready to work abroad. Also, another option, um, I actually tapped into this option to uh, pay for some of my daughter's college was I use my um, life insurance. So some of y'all may have like a whole term or a life insurance maybe similar to that, that accrues value um, every year or after a certain amount of years, it'll accrue a certain amount of value. And that's something that I've tapped into to, like I said, pay for my daughter's college. It was one of the ways I did that. And the interest rates that borrow against your, your life insurance, like the interest rate is so low. So that's also an option of something that you can look into, you know, which we should all have life insurance anyway, but that's something that maybe you should, should have in place. And if you do have one in place, see if maybe you have value on it, that that can be something that you can use to help you in your work travel endeavors. Okay, I highly, highly recommend whether you're choosing to do the private sector, um, you know, option like I do, or you're choosing to travel abroad, uh, you should definitely have a travel credit card, at least one, you know, particularly an airline card. If, if, if anything, if you do choose to get another one, um, you could choose another airline card or you could choose a hotel card, either or. But the great thing about having a rewards card is it gives you great options of travel hacking. So, you know, initially signing up for one of those travel rewards cards is a lot of them have a sign up bonus. They could be anywhere from 30,000 miles to 75,000 miles when you first sign up. And usually the requirement for getting the miles is like you have to spend three to between three to 5,000 is usually the average on most of those um, specials, which is easy to do because things that you would pay for anyway, like, you know, your groceries, your utilities, your phone, even like your rent can all go towards this bonus. And you just use that credit card um, when you get approved for it, use that to pay for all your normal expenses that you're gonna pay for anyway, pay it off right away, and then all those points are good for having those incentives. One, you're gonna get obviously the mileage special with signing up with the card, and then um, you're also accruing um, value while you have it. And then the great thing about um, the travel cards is, you know, usually you get one to two free check baggage uh, baggages, which already that saves you anywhere from 50 to hundred dollars each way, depending on the airline and what their baggage fees are, um, which is huge because that saves you money. Also, um, some of them give you like lounge, so many lounge passes um, each year. 
Also, depending on what level you are within the card after you've had it, you can be automatically put on an upgrade list, also getting priority boarding. There's just so many benefits to having it. And the biggest benefit, obviously, is if depending on the level of points, amount of points you have, um, say if you do get like a 75,000 sign up bonus for um, a credit card, depending on where you're trying to go, that's almost like that's basically like a round trip ticket, at least somewhere, you know, which and that could probably cover your at least, you know, each way when you're traveling to your location, you're trying to work um, back home um, at a very low rate. You know, you could book a flight, even if it's domestically and get a flight that might be anywhere from five to a thousand dollars, but you're only paying like eighty five to a hundred dollars for that same flight. So you can save you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars if you really utilize the um, travel hacking tips that some of these cards offer. So definitely whether private client or traveling abroad, look into that option. Because even if you're doing a private client, they're not required to let you fly full first class or anything like that. So I like that I have the option to either already be on these upgrade lists or I can just upgrade myself at like little to no cost. So. Anyways, I hope all of these tools were helpful for you. If they were, please subscribe and hit that like button. I do plan on making more content. I have a whole list of topics that I need to take the time out to film. But and if there's something that you would like me to talk about and give my experience and tips on, please leave the comments and let me know. So I hope this video um, was helpful for you. Love you, mean it. And I will see y'all and talk to y'all later. Bye.